Dear reader, I'm Tony, and this is Book Text. So one of the emphases that I'm putting on this channel is the language of the books that we love. And I collected some books today that are about language, specifically the English language, though there are many other wonderful languages out there that I just don't know enough about. But first, our word of the day is an actual entry in the Oxford English Dictionary, or the OED, as the in-crowd call it. The word is awesome sauce. No joke, it's in the Oxford English Dictionary now. Um, its first recorded use was in 2001, right when I was hitting that teenage stride of kind of rebelling against the strictness of language. And this word is one of my favorite slang words. It's an adjective meaning excellent, if you didn't know. And it is firmly ensconced in my vocabulary. So I have a few books that are um, things that I've read before that I loved about language. And then I have a TBR because I found on my language shelf that there were several books that I bought recently and has still not read. And so I will share a little bit about those. And if you're interested in any of these books, I will uh, mention them below in the, in the description. So first, the books that I have read. The first one is um, By Hook or By Crook by David Crystal. This is a linguistic travelogue. So um, David Crystal is a really charming linguist and he is, is quite uh, maybe more of a popular uh, rock star kind of linguist. As he travels around England doing various research or speeches, presentations, he writes about the things that he learns about the history of words, accents, dialects, etymology. He One thing that really stands out to me that he mentions in here is that accent changes street by street in London because of how closely people are uh, living. That was kind of uh, cruel to me. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, about this book is that it also talks about the discipline of linguistics and the study of language. And that was actually one of the emphases I had in college. Um, I took several courses on the English language and they were some of my absolute favorites. So I, I enjoyed kind of returning to some of the things that I did as a, a linguistic student. Um, in his own words, this book is, quote, an attempt to capture the exploratory, seductive, teasing, quirky, tantalizing nature of language study. I recommend this book if you're interested at all in language. And also you learn a lot about uh, English uh, landscapes and things like that. I also have, from another popular English, British English linguist, um, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss. This came out quite a bit ago. Um, Lynn Truss actually came and spoke to my university when I was an undergraduate, and I remember her being hilarious and warm and just a fellow grammar nerd. So this book covers some of the uh, funny errors, some funny rules and controversies about um, grammar. Highly recommend this. Um, Lynn Truss also actually writes murder mysteries that are fun and uh, adventurous, almost cozy. They're, they're set in the jazz age as well, um, as, as kind of the golden age of mystery, right? Where Agatha Christie was writing and Patricia Wentworth and many others. So uh, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves, very funny. Highly recommend, really easy to read. Also in the category of kind of really readable, popular linguistics books. Um, I have a couple of Richard Letterer's um, Crazy English series. I don't actually have Crazy English, which I believe is kind of like the first one, but I do have uh, The Revenge of Anguished English and uh, The Play of Words. And both books are in the comedy kind of line. They include a lot of, of uh, word games. If you want puns, he's got them. If you want uh, funny etymology, he's got it. All sorts of games you can play with words, 
funny turn of phrases. Um, they're, they're kind of, to me, they, they poke fun at the bizarre and rather hybrid nature of the English language. It's quite a mutt of language. So those are the books that I have read about English. On to the books that I haven't read that are on my shelf. And this is so embarrassing because there's more unread books than there were read books. The first one is a gorgeous book. If you, I don't know if you can see, but there is embossed this uh, old text on the entire cover. Great touch. This is The Adventure of English by Melvin Bragg. It is subtitled a, a The Biography of a Language. So this is kind of a history of the English language book written for a more popular audience, simply meaning not an academic audience. I had an academic textbook on the history of English, and it was the only textbook that I ever returned. And I regret it. I regretted it for over 10 years. I, I, so I'm excited to have some connection to the history of the English language. It was one of my favorite courses. Um, so I can't wait to kind of refresh my studies with The Adventure of English. I also have, this seems to be a little more academic. Well, actually, it's, I think it's a combination maybe of academic and popular. This is Language Myths. It is an essay collection edited by Laurie Bauer and Peter Trudgell. And it tackles several um, kind of common myths that people assume about the English language or assume maybe about rules of the English language. And one thing I will say is that our language is super adaptable. Um, it changes, it evolves all the time. It is literally a living language. Um, and we change and, and adapt and lose parts of ourselves and gain parts all the time. And the language does the same thing. And people who um, can't see the evolution of language sometimes hold on to old rules uh, more than they should. So some of the uh, essays in here tackle myths such as uh, women talk too much. That should be interesting. Um, double negatives are illogical. It's a myth that they tackle. Everyone has an accent except me. So this, this really covers a lot of different elements of uh, language study, um, both usage and grammar uh, and probably lots of other things. I, I'm looking forward to kind of re reviewing some rules. It's good for me to review what is important and what is not important to prescribe to my students because I do teach writing and I get questions all the time from students asking, like, can I split an infinitive? Yes, you can split an infinitive carefully. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to kind of refreshing my knowledge of language myths and what's actually true. There's also kind of a fun uh, etymology book, What's in a Word by Webb Garrison. Fascinating stories of everyday phrases and words. Uh, a couple entries that I thought were interesting I wrote down in my notes. Uh, oh, Steal My Thunder. Okay, let me see if I can find this. The, the word for, or the, the, the origin of the phrase, Steal My Thunder, um, came from an English dramatist. For the production of a play, John Dennis invented a new and more effective way of simulating thunder on stage. His play soon folded, but shortly afterward, he discovered his thunder machine in use for a performance of Macbeth at the same theater. Dennis was furious. See how the rascals use me, he cried. They will not let my play run, and yet they steal my thunder? So now you know, it was a, it was a thunder machine um, being used for Macbeth without the permission of the inventor. So lots of kind of fun things in here. I, I'm look, looking forward to reading up on more everyday uh, etymology. The last two books come in a pair because they are by the same author and they appear to be on the same topic. And so I don't know exactly what the difference is uh, between them. They are uh, Simon Winchester's books, The Meaning of Everything and The Professor and the Madman. And both of these books tell the story 
of the Oxford English Dictionary, the best dictionary out there. I actually own a severely abridged edition. Um, I have a one volume edition and the actual um, edition, the, the actual dictionary is, let me see, 20 volumes. So, the, and I know a little bit about the history of the OED because I uh, am in, kind of in love with the OED, uh, but basically uh, it was written by a professor and an insane, insane asylum uh, patient. And there's a murder involved because this book begins with, I, I, I snuck a peek at the beginning. Uh, it begins with the murder entry in for the word murder in the OED. Uh, so there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I think maybe this one might be more of a popular book. This one might be a little bit more academic. I'm not sure. I don't know what the distinction is, um, but I'm one way to find out is to dive into them. Uh, so I plan to do that soon. Do you also love language? What do you know? What, have you taken classes? Please uh, discuss this with me in the comments. I'd love to, um, to chat language with somebody else. Remember, there's always another book.